All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the Fabric Pavichenko tutorial session today. Uh, we are lucky to host you the session uh, right now from Switzerland and from Argentina. Uh, so I'm Marcus, uh, I'm with IBM Research in Zurich. And with me here is Maria. Hi, I am Maria. Um, I'm an independent consultant. All right, and we together we will guide you through your first hands-on experience on, on Fabric Pavichenko, if this is the first experience for you. And in order to find this out, we created a poll here in the system, which uh, we would like to answer you to get a little bit understanding uh, what uh, the experience with Fabric Pavichenko all our audience already has. Um, so please go to the poll and vote. All right. And in this tutorial we do, uh, I will start with a little um, yeah, deep dive into the technology to answer the question what FPC or Fabric Private Chain Code actually is. And then I will hand over to Maria to do uh, the hands-on part to show your FPC in action. <coughs> All right. So let's jump into uh, the presentation first. So we all know about uh, use cases which make sense for blockchain application because they can benefit from the verifiability aspects of a blockchain. However, there are also use cases which come with strong privacy requirements. Think about, for, uh, for instance, an auction system or a voting um, uh, system based on a blockchain where we definitely benefit from the verifiability aspect. So for voting, we can then later verify that all votes have to have been considered during the voting process. This is nice. However, those use cases, they come uh, with a strong privacy requirement. For voting, we understand that all the ballots uh, need to, uh, uh, that we need um, to maintain the secrecy of all the ballots, right? Uh, for a sealed auction, for instance, we also need to maintain the secrecy of the bits. And there are other use cases where also some parts, maybe of a contract, uh, we do not want to reveal to other part parties on the blockchain. Luckily, I need to, oh yes. So luckily there are already some privacy mechanisms available with Hyperledger Fabric. For instance, we have channel, which allows us to split our blockchain into multiple blockchains essentially, and thereby separate uh, uh, the participants. Uh, but there's all, there are also um, private data collections which help us to um, uh, partition the, the data access to certain data, um, or we can just, uh, submit data uh, as part of a transient field of a transaction, which in the end does not end up in the, uh, as part of the transaction on the blockchain. And those mechanisms already allows us to, to cover a broad range of privacy sensitive use cases. However, um, there's a problem. And the problem is actually the data visibility at the endorsing peers. What uh, what does this mean? So if we think about the voting example again, if the government would run an endorsing peer for such a voting system, they would have access uh, to all the ballots, even if they are encrypted in some form, because if they want to process them, they need to decrypt them. So this is a problem. <clears throat> and in order to tackle that problem, we are introducing Fabric Private Chain Code, or just FPC, which is a framework to build, deploy, and run uh, private chain codes for Hyperledger um, Fabric, and with a particular focus on such use cases which require strong privacy requirements. And in the core, uh, why we can do that with Fabric Private Chain Code is that because we are leveraging modern um, hardware-based trusted execution technology like Intel SGX. <clears throat> F FPC or Fabric Chain Code uh, benefits from the use of that technology uh, in three different ways, and um, we <clears throat> therefore Fabric Private Chain Code um, um, provides us three nice properties. So the first property is confidential compute. That means that all the transaction and the ledger um, content uh, is. Um, contain only encrypted data. <clears throat> uh, the second property is verifiable operation. That means that all the transactions are verified through an attestation process 
backed into the trusted execution hardware. And the third property is that we can prevent data misuse because all the uh, chain code related data is um, bound to the uh, to the use inside the trusted execution context uh, or technology. So I'm not sure if you all heard about um, Intel SGX, trusted execution technology, confidential computing is a new buzzword nowadays. But I try to summarize those nice properties just in a single slide. Uh, there's definitely more to explore about that technology. See on the documentation, for instance, um, for Intel SGX. Um, however, all that trusted execution technologies like Intel SGX have, have one common goal. So um, the thing is that they try to isolate um, a specific um, portion of your or a sensitive portion of your application and execute it in an, in an isolated form in, in a so-called enclave or enclave. <clears throat> and um, this is done by leveraging um, um, <clears throat> some secure memory uh, or hard, yeah, hardware protected memory inside uh, the CPU architecture and um, which prevents um, Unauthorized, uh, unauthorized access from application outside the enclave. That also means that even the uh, administrator or the operating system of, of the host system cannot look at runtime inside uh, what's going on in, in such an enclave. And this gives us uh, the confidentiality property and allows us to uh, provision our enclave with sensitive data without revealing it to the host. The second property uh, we get through such an um, uh, enclave is uh, it maintains the integrity of the execution of the application itself. If we now think about if we put a smart contact or a chain code in such a trusted execution environment, it's ensured uh, by the hardware that um, the smart contact follows its, its specification. And as a third part, uh, which is crucial to establish trust in an application which is executed with an enclave is the verifiability through attestation, which allows a third party to send a challenge um, to, to the enclave-based application in order to retrieve an attestation or cryptographic proof that it runs a specific code uh, on a protected um, platform, essentially. And, uh, Combining this with fabric chain code, we get fabric private chain code, essentially. <clears throat> so let's have a brief look at how the architecture of fabric private chain code looks like. So we can see on the right side, we, we see a bunch of peers, an ordering service, and, a, client, uh, and um, a couple of clients. The clients are uh, part of an organization, and together the consortium at the beginning agrees on the chain code definition, which includes in, with Fabric Private Chain Code the code identity of the chain code we are executing inside the enclave. In SGX language, this is also called MR enclave. This is done initially. Then a chain code enclave on the peer is spawned, uh, provisioned with the FPC chain code, which then is executed, again, securely and isolated from the executing or from the endorsing peer. Um, <coughs> since we're using that trusted execution environment, the peer cannot access on the code and data inside the enclave. <coughs> However, uh, in order to make a uh, chain code working, the chain code, of course, needs to consume data. First is the, the transaction proposal itself when it's, uh, the execution is triggered. In order to protect that, uh, our FPC client SDK is, is responsible to encrypt and authenticate the arguments of a transaction proposal in a way that only the chain code, the FPC chain code, can decrypt it. And the second part is the word state, which is retrieved by a chain code uh, when the application logic uh, needs to access the state. And by default, um, also all the data is encrypted when it's stored outside the chain code that is on the word state. <clears throat> so this basically covers uh, th the basics of how FPC, fabric private chain code, is working. Um, 
But since this is a tutorial, we would like to target uh, focus a little bit more today on the on the user experience or developer experience. So um, first of all, our uh, Fabric Private Chain Code is available on GitHub. Um, we um, created an RFC last year, which was accepted this year for, for Fabric. And um, now we are um, all the code, which is uh, already uh, fully implemented um, um, and is there to be, to be tested um, for you. In order to make your life easier, uh, we provide you a Dockerized um, development environment, which already comes with all the software dependencies uh, installed. In particular, in order to compile or build Fabric Private Chain Code, we rely on the Intel SGX SDK to compile the code, which is then executed inside such a trusted execution environment. Since not all, not everyone has SGX capable hardware, um, also our development environment also comes with this SGX simulation mode. So you can, so you don't have to worry about getting the hardware first. You can just go to our repository, uh, get the code, create the Docker container, and just start uh, playing with Fabric Private Chain code. Um, in order to, I mean, developing and compiling a chain code is just one aspect. You also want to run um, your chain code in a test environment. So therefore, we also provide you in that development environment um, a test network based on the fabric samples um, you may already know about. But we also provide you uh, an integration test harness for, for rapid development and testing of your fabric private chain code. Let's have a look um, what a fabric private chain code looks like. So as I said, we are relying on the Intel SGX SDK for compiling the actual chain code. Uh, FPC chain code is therefore written in C, C++. However, in order to make um, or to, to, to provide you the same look and feel as you're already familiar with, with other chain code languages like Go or um, in JavaScript, we also try to um, provide you the same experience, but just from the perspective of a C++, C++ developer, of course. That means in order to write a chain code, you just um, have to implement uh, an invoke method, which then triggers your application logic. Um, and our FPC, sh uh, FPC shim uh, allows you to access uh, the, the ledgers um, through get state and put state operation, but you, there are also additional functionalities available in the shim in order to, for, for instance, to get the function name and the parameters. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the, the interesting thing about our FPC shim is that it already takes care for you about uh, the protection of the data. That means that the shim is responsible to encrypt and decrypt the, the data when, uh, when get state and put state is, uh, um, is invoked. However, uh, due to security reasons, we only provide a limited uh, shim functionality. But if you think there is something missing which prevents you from using it in your use case, please let us know. We, we can look into that. Um, developing the, the chain code itself is just one side. Uh, as we saw in the architecture slide, we also have to look into the, the client application. And in order to make this as smooth as possible, we provide you the FPC client SDK for Go, which is based, again, on top of the normal um, Fabric SDK for Go, um, and extend it um, with the transparent with the same mechanisms with transparent encryption for the transaction arguments, as mentioned before. That allows us to protect the chain code interaction, but we also provide you with the lifecycle commands in order to, um, to package, install, approve, and commit an FPC chain code. <coughs> um, and with this, I give to Maria for the hands-on session. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Um, there are some questions in the Q&A that um, you might want to look at while I am start showing. So Marcus, 
on what FPC is about and what we have to be able to use it. So the first thing we he mentioned is that we have the repository here, right? The 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 Git repository here. In the Git repository, we have the README that we can start to follow to be able to create this environment, that um, this um, FPC environment. Um, I don't have on my um, on my laptop any SGX um, Intel processor, so uh, I have to go with the uh, Docker image, right? So to be able to do that, I first had to uh, get the clone the fabric chain code. Um, and I no, um, make note of this because you have to do it, um, you have to use a certain flag to be able to get the whole environment set it. Um, once you follow these um, instructions, you just have to do a make run and um, then you get. Uh, a Docker environment ready uh, with all the <coughs> SPC, um, FPC, sorry, functionality incorporated. Uh, one of the cool things about uh, this is that uh, you get your your the your directory is mounted. So while you're working on the your you, if you want to um, work on stuff and use your own editor to be able to um, change the samples, for example, or whatever, you can do it using what you already have installed, and it, would, it will be all automatically reflected inside of the Docker image. So in um, what are the samples that we have? Here, if we look at the directory structure here in the repository, we can see that there is a samples uh, directory. In the samples directory, we have categorized the different samples according to the um, what, what their um, object is, or objective is. If it's the, an application to be able to access and execute uh, an FPC chain code, if it is the chain code, chain code per se, or if it is that we want to add this functionality to an environment. So in Right now, what I'm going to show you is how would, if we want to write an FPC chain code and when we want to start with a sample, we could um, choose the hello world sample. In this hello world sample, we have here the, the code that we should follow. In this uh, sample, what you do is you develop the chain code, you launch the fabric network, you install it, and you in, uh, instantiate it in a uh, um, a very reduced environment with only a peer so that you can try it out and then in the transactions using um, the two functions of the transactions store asset and retrieve asset this in 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 this tutorial we um, invoke these transactions using the um, peer command and line interface FPC extension and also using the FPC client SDK for go okay so I like to use uh, VS Code, so I have um, here in in the tutorial we explain everything that you have to create, and you can go through that. But I have already set up here the different files that uh, we would need. The first one is the the chain code per se, the program, and here we can see the Hello World uh, chain code. And we can see here in the invoke transaction that we are here calling the function and we are calling asset, we are calling store asset, and if it's retrieve asset, we are calling retrieve asset. And if we go and look at these functions, store asset and retrieve asset up here, we can see that we are using put state and get state. So it's the same. Um, functionality that we usually see in fabric environments okay so once you have created the um the hello world uh you need to um compile it and we also provide the files the definition the cmake lists and the make files so that you can compile it and you want to test it so we also give you an um uh, a script that lets you create an environment where here you can see that we are going to um, execute the the same the similar commands as you would in in an 
in an uh, in, F in a fabric environment to be able to package, install, approve, um, commit, um, approve from organization and commit a chain code. And we also have the uh, the um, an, an, a special another um, instruction to be able to start that enclave that Marcus was talking about. And then you can invoke the chain code. Um, here, in this case, we are invoking, and you can see that here it is invoking, and that we can see function and the value. And the important thing is that under the covers, when FPC receives that, it, it encrypts it and stores it encrypted. So even though we might be seeing it here in the clear, um, FPC handles um, everything so that it is um, encrypted. Now. You would normally, I said this comes and you, you, we get a small environment, right? And what we wanted to show you here is how you can, why, why use that, okay? That wouldn't be as exciting as if we could show you how you could incorporate this Hello World chain code in an actual environment, right? Because we don't usually, our um, fabric environments don't con, con, aren't, uh, consist only of one peer. So what, um, what we did is we, and I'll show you here again in the created another sample in inside of the deployment for the test network where you set up a test network based on the fabric samples. And what we do there is add the FPC functionality, add this chain code so that the chain code that is executed in this environment is the one that we've developed. So following this tutorial, changing only here where it says um, echo to hello world, um, I was able to uh, set up an environment, okay? And if you follow this tutorial here, it offers you down below, it offers you here the possibility to use a, a, a Go um, program that has the FPC, uh, that is using, sorry, the FPC client SDK for Go to be able to enter. And if I go back here to, sorry, to VS Code and I show you the application. So here is the code of the um, of the FPC of, of this application that is connecting using the FPC client SDK. And we can see that here I am connecting like I would in any uh, environment. I am connecting to a gateway. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my credentials from my wallet. And then I am getting the contract. This is all part of um, what we have included in, in the FPC client SDK for Go. So they are similar um, <clears throat> APIs as you would have in Fabric. And here we have uh, a small, well, according to what um, FPC, if it's Echo or if it's um, Hello World, what we are going to invoke. Here again, you're going to see that we have store asset, asset one, um, asset one with a value 100 and that we submit the transaction, okay? The same as uh, your functionality as you have um, in um, Fabric where you can invoke a submit transaction or an evaluate transaction, you have here. Now, if I go to my environment here, I can run this, as you can see as I've already run it here, I can run it, I can change here the organization that I am going to be running it against. And we are going to see that it says that it is invoking the uh, fabric uh, private chain code, hello world, and that the result is okay. But um, you might say, hey, but how do I know if it's, go it's encrypted or if it isn't encrypted, okay? How, um, I want to believe what you're saying. So what we uh, did is, what I did was I added to this test network, Blockchain um, Explorer. And if I go here to the Explorer, and let me log in again so that 
it can show us So here, this was following the hyper uh, the 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 blockchain explorer tutorial. It was quite simple to add it, and here I'm going to be able to see the transactions that uh, were executed. And here I can see these are the normal the life cycle ones that we saw where we um, where we install, we we approve, we commit all of those that are here, and then we see the specific one. For, um, for FPC when it registers to be able to uh, obtain the uh, credentials. And here we can see the Hello World. And here, if I look at the Hello World, I can look down below here and see the, uh, the values. So here we can see asset one and that the value is, um, Y, um, Y3, MG, so it's not 100 like we saw that it is in the code, okay? So we can see that here it is encrypted. And if we look at the following one and look at the value there, we can also see that it is, that um, it's whomever is looking at the ledger is not going to easily be able to deduce what the values are because both of the, uh, we have hard coded uh, 100 and the value that we are obtaining is totally different. With this, uh, here's the other one that I run. Look, it just that we can see that it is running, that it ran, and that it also is giving another value. Good thing about this is that I could come over here and say, okay, let's change this and let's put 200 here. And let me save and here to the terminal and run it again. And we let it run. It is taking its time because it's sleepy like I am, it seems. We are going to see it populate here, another transaction. And if I look um, at its uh, value, it is going to be totally different. I just have to wait. So show us until it runs. And it wants to go to sleep, it seems, just like I would like to go to sleep. Too early in Argentina. Yeah, the computer knows it. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to take the time and reply some of the, um, answer some of the questions. Yes, so uh, let me also, share the screen again so I can okay. show the last slide again. Yes, of course. All right. Um, so thank you, Maria, again for that uh, hands-on presentation on FPC. I, I think uh, we all now got an intuition what, what it takes to, to write an FPC chain code, compile it, and then run it using our, our test network. So as Maria mentioned, we have on our GitHub repository, we have a bunch of readmes which guides you through the process of uh, writing the code. Um, there were some question and one question was about, oh no, there are more question. One question was about any production case of FPC. And uh, so there, 
uh, this is a nice question. So I would uh, highlight another session today where uh, Andrew and Bruno will talk about uh, a potential use case of FPC, and, and which is integrating FPC into an existing system. Um, so join the session, bringing uh, trust and privacy preserving smart contracts to clinical trials in healthcare. Um, but I would also like to emphasize that um, um, right now we are, um, we are working towards a production ready code of FPC, uh, but the code is already uh, feature complete in a way that you can already start testing it and uh, doing, uh, using it for POCs. But right now, we do not recommend it for uh, for production at this moment. Let me see what other questions we had. Um, there's an, there's a question that I, um, was asking if it does take um, this long. Ricardo Vaso is asking if it does take this long to run the transactions. And no, it doesn't. But um, I have a lot running on my laptop and with the video streaming and it all, it, it is, I don't have that much memory on my laptop. Yeah, so the uh, there was also another question about the overhead of FPC. Um, FPC definitely introduces some overhead because by default we are encrypting all the inputs and the outputs. That takes some time um, as well inside the chain code during the endorsement, but also on the client side when the arguments are encrypted before they are sent to the endorsing peers. That, of course, introduces overhead. However, the actual overhead introduced by uh, the SGX technology is more or less negligible. So we have a we have a, a scientific paper linked also on our repository, which um, also addresses uh, some performance evaluation uh, of an uh, let's say earlier architecture of FPC, uh, and, and there it turns out that uh, there are other bottlenecks into fabric. Um, um, or into the communication between a chain code and the, the word state, which introduces more overhead than executing the actual chain code inside the enclave. So there's another interesting question. Would the SGX emulator be appropriate for production or would you recommend just use it for de uh, development only? So the SGX simulation mode is not meant to use for production. So if you run something with uh, in the S SGX simulator, it's not secure. <laughs> it's just for, for developing purpose. So for, for running it securely with SGX, you actually need SGX capable hardware. Another question is, any one-click deployment package available to test like Docker or Vagrant? Um, I wouldn't say one-click deployment packages, but uh, with our Docker uh, setup, um, we, we try to go into that direction. At the moment, we are, we are not uh, distributing a, a pre-compiled Docker image. Um, so that means right now you have to to clone our repository and build the, the Docker images by yourself, which takes a couple of minutes, but uh, it's fine, I, I hope, as a, as a start. Um, do, 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 do. There's another question about the overhead. In the paper, you say that it's 10, 20% for an auction app. And could this overhead scale with more complex applications? Well, I think then in the paper we are we are talking about uh, a single a single the overhead of a single chain code. I mean, the the way of uh, scaling in general with Fabric is if your if the processing of your chain code takes much time, you need to scale. You just spawn multiple or add more endorsers, which can then execute the chain code, right? Um, but so the, um, I think the, the, the crucial part, which, uh, which makes your application slow in general for normal chain code, but also for the FPC chain code is, is uh, whenever the chain code uh, needs to access uh, the word state. So whenever you perform the get state operation, this is really expensive uh, operation with normal chain code and with fabric private chain code. Because what, what needs to happen is that the chain code communicates back to the peer via gRPC 
ask, hey, can you please look into the into the word state? Is there a key uh, which I provide you? Um, and then uh, the peer needs to go to the, to the database depending on the uh, implementation of, uh, of the word uh, state database. It takes uh, more time, I don't know. And then we have to communicate those data back. And on top of that with FPC, the data then also needs to be decrypted when it's read into uh, the chain code. So, uh, yeah, so, so I'm struggling a little bit here uh, being more precise on uh, in terms of a percentage overhead here. Um, we have not yet really evaluated the, the current implementation to see what are the uh, the limits of fabric private chain code. We are right now focusing more on the functionality and try to improve the um, yeah the the feel for the end user in order to simplify the adoption of FPC. So and we are over time, but so I'm happy to answer more questions. But if you guys need to leave to go to another session, um, we can. We have also um, the chance to take uh, things offline. You can either visit us on the Hyperledger Rocket Chat and Fabric Private Chain Code, or we can also interact here in the Hope in um, app somehow, I guess, uh, and, and continue um, discussions. Yes, and um, the important thing, I don't know, Marcus, is if you have referenced them to the session um, uh, that's going to be later today, uh, um, where the there's going to be a use case presented. Right. I, I think I said that, but uh, oh, okay. say, sorry. Say, I was, sorry. saying that again, it's, uh. that's, that's good. Um, I don't know. So Mark, can, can we answer those questions here in the, in the Q&A later? And people who ask those questions can see that. Mark, your action yes. is required as a moderator here. Yes, yes he, he said yes. Oh, he said yes in the chat. Yes. Uh -huh. I just look at the Q&A. OK. So, so then I uh, propose that, that we uh, conclude now this session. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope uh, everyone learned something about Fabric Private Chain Code and uh, visit our GitHub repository. And if you feel something is missing, just create an issue or feature request and let us know uh, so we can further improve Fabric Private Chain Code to make it um, more usable uh, than it is right now. Thank you so much. Thank you.